It's about that time. Let's go. Uh, uh. Welcome to the clubhouse. This is Vela's Weekly Digest. Every Wednesday, make sure that the time's set. Everything blockchain news on the day to day. Vela's here to tell you, Shirley, take it away. So welcome back to our weekly Clubhouse stream. I am Sirli Valge, COO at Velas, and on behalf of our team, welcome to the Velas Weekly Blockchain Digest. As always, I am joined by my co-host Dolphine Forma. Uh, she is the Chief Compliance Officer at DAL, board member of the Open West Association, and the prominent voice in the global blockchain ecosystem. Thank you for joining, Dolphine. And our guest today, GoHead CV Labs, where Velas is headquartered at. Uh, she's in charge of the corporate and institutional side of the Crypto Valley Venture Capital and Crypto Valley Labs ecosystem. Tracy, welcome to our clubhouse. Thanks for having me. And for those of you um, who are joining us for the first time, I'm seeing some new names. So we are doing this uh, on a weekly basis and together with our guests, Delphine and I discuss the latest news and happenings. We have also opened up our own house, the official Velas Club as well as dedicated LinkedIn page. So join us there or bring either of us for invites. So to kick things off, let's chat about the Bitcoin price as every week. Um, prepare your confetti because we are over the 60,000 resistance and hitting the all time high. Uh, Bitcoin currently trading at 63,000 and it seems that sky is the limit now. What is interesting is that Bitcoin December futures reached uh, 73,500, which is um, Bitcoin's three month futures premium, uh, reaching a record high of 50%, which uh, signals market inefficiencies. So as bullish future calls mature this month, where do either of you see the Bitcoin price heading? Has your prognosis changed, Delphine? Of course not, Charlie. I'm keeping on 100k by the end of the year. That's, I think that should be a good guess. But you know, with 63 today, everything is possible because we are only in April. Maybe I should say 100k for uh, July. This is a new prognosis, Charlie. <laughs> Nice. And you, Tracy, what is your prognosis? <laughs> I don't know if I'm quite that quick to jump on the, uh, the 100K by July bandwagon, but I think all in all, you know, the Coinbase IPO could serve as sort of a milestone for crypto by attracting a whole new group of investors and, you know, encouraging other crypto related entities to go public. I'm not really surprised that the market is running because nobody's selling in the run up to the IPO, right? And the resulting, let's call it a sales hiatus, ensured that the price kept going up. The question for me is if Bitcoin holds those gains even after the market has digested this Coinbase IPO rally, then I take that as a fairly positive sign that there's sort of a wider margin of individuals that are embracing Bitcoin's long term potential. Um, that would include investors that are recognizing the appeal of its strategic hedge against future inflation, things like that. Um, from a chart perspective, it looks like it's set for more gains, but you know, the breakout now above 61 and a half K, it's some measured move to project that it'll go to, I don't know, 69 with sort of a short term time horizon, but long term, oof, who knows, right? Um, as as Delphine says, it's, it's, it's definitely a positive development. The sky's the limit. Um, but let's see, let's see what happens now in the in the coming days, I think. All right, thank you for your prognosis and for your in depth uh, opinion. Um, there was another winner this week, actually. I don't know if you're holding, but uh, Binance Exchange token BNB, which exploded to almost $700 per coin, starting from 10 cents airdrops just a few years ago. This is happening on the back of the exchange's announcement that users will be able to trade tokenized stocks and will start with Tesla. Users will be able to purchase as little as one hundredth of a Tesla share with prices settled in Binance uh, USD. And what we just read today, the Coinbase coin stock will be listed there as well. So on a side note, I would like to mention for the first time, Binance is actually playing catch up as another exchange uh, here based in Liechtenstein, Bittrex Global, where Velas is listed on as well, has had tokenized stocks offering for a few months now. Just on a side note, what, what do you think about that? 
Well, you know, Shirley, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's been a while that uh, the BNB token price is, uh, is rising quite fast. And I'm not surprised because a lot of DeFi projects are you know, trying to find an alternative to Ethereum blockchain as the fees are very high uh, on Ethereum. But however, I mean, like, uh, we need to keep in mind that Binance chain is still kind of a, it's still kind of centralized. So the question is like maybe Rhino is gonna keep rising a little bit, but when you look at the price chart, it's like it's rising like very straight up. So I would not be surprised if it uh, would be a, a correction anytime soon. Uh, but I think it's a good move um, to start with a tokenized share. I actually wanted to try the functionality base since that I have to upgrade my KYC and it's been more than 24 hours and I'm not happy. It hasn't been processed yet. My KYC is not so strange, come on. Uh, and uh, because I like, you know, to try buy some Tesla and if I, uh, and for Coinbase, I may try to do it on Binance just to see how that work. But I think it's a really good move, you know, I mean, it's been a while that in the industry we need uh, exchanges where we can uh, trade this kind of product. Uh, so it's really cool that now there are two online to do that. So I think it's great. Yeah, you should also try it out on Bitrix Global and then compare the user experience. Good idea. I'm going to try to do that, Charlie. <laughs> Tracy, do you have any holdings or exposure in BNB? Uh, not not yet um as as uh, delphine says it's it's been an interesting thing to watch i think um kept i kept hold i kept holding out for a long time and then kind of felt like i'd missed the mark and then every time you think you've missed the mark it just keeps going up um yeah, at the end the of the day way. exactly right <laughs> at the end of the day you know i think it's it's a smart very strategic move on binance's part a big thing is that you know tesla and elon musk they both command these huge loyal followings and that popularity uh, and the corresponding exposure that, that it gives serves as a strong catalyst to attract new traders who now have the opportunity to diversify their portfolio by venturing both into crypto and the traditional start mar stock market. But it's it's convenient because it's within the same platform. So I think, it, you know, it, it's as you said, you know, Bittrex has been doing this for a couple of months. It's sort of a logical next step, I think. True. Uh, by the way, uh, if anyone in the audience uh, wants to comment on any of the news we're covering, then feel free anytime to raise your hand and I will let you weigh in. So you're always welcome, don't be shy. And another big news item for us, the privacy-focused messenger app Signal announced a new be uh, beta version today with support for cryptocurrency payments. Signal users in the UK can now send and receive mobile coin, uh, which is a privacy coin in the vein of uh, Zcash and Monero, directly in the app. Mobile coin operates on its own blockchain, forked from Stellar. And that is another news announcement that indicates the demand for uh, more decentralized social media platform solutions with different functionalities integrated in them, cryptocurrency payment solution being one of them. So I cannot wait to be able to share our Bit Orbit product developed by Vela's launch news in one only couple of weeks. Did you see the news and what are what are your thoughts? Are you uh, regular users of Signal? On my side, no, I am not using Signal, but um, and why I is that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I have Venus, you know, I mean, I have there's so many ways to reach me out. I'm like, no, thank you. I'm not adding something new. You know, I already have Telegram. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. WhatsApp, mm -hmm. Slack and everything is just uh, no. Yeah, you, I Tracy? feel I feel it's it's not that perfect user experience yet compared do, to Telegram, for example. Do you have it? Yeah, I do. Uh -huh, it's, more, it's the most privacy respecting and most like secure apparently but the user experience i'm not too happy with okay good to know you you you'll update me on on the topic Shadi. <laughs> tracy what are you using no, the most? no signal no signal on my end either although i do i do know quite a few people who use it um particularly in eastern europe i believe it's quite popular um no i think it, for me it was also a question of does it make sense to add another app and i think most of the people i know that use it use another you know use some other messaging service as well 
um, and then you just consolidate. Otherwise, you end up with I don't know how many apps on your phone and, you know, having to then remember who you can reach through what channels becomes a bit of an exercise. So I think uh, I, I'm doing myself the favor and uh, making it a bit a bit simpler on my end. And what I if they include a cryptocurrency payment solution, which no other app currently supports? Well, on my side, it doesn't change in my opinion. Uh, I, I, I'm fully on board with Tracy. I have Ina's app. I don't need, and I, I actually don't really see, you know, the need of having to talk with people and using a cryptocurrency. You know, I mean, like if I want to encrypt to somebody, I don't need to do it through a messaging system. I don't know. No. You're old fashioned, yeah. <laughs> I know, you know, everyone knows I'm old fashioned. Come on, Charlie, this is not new. French. <laughs> <laughs> very traditional no i don't think it does i don't think it really changes anything on my end either to be quite honest um probably not what the people at signal want to hear but um unfortunately i'll have to disappoint them yeah and also Jody, i mean like i've read a lot of articles um you know and this news recently there was a few articles uh and they bring like a lot of um uh, there is a lot of controversies around that you know apparently not everyone is super happy that Signal is now mixing having an, uh, a cryptocurrencies for payment inside the app and apparently it will work only in the UK anyway and there has also been some uh, article uh, talking about the fact that the founder of Signal uh, had been deeply involved uh, with mobile coin in the past and that also looks like for some people looks like some conflict of interest or like or he's trying to boost something i mean like there's some stuff going on over there so uh that, that was quite interesting but as tracy mentioned at the beginning of the show we have something more exciting today uh and it's uh, the conbay direct listing news so uh, just on a side note, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a lawyer, right? So I'm very, for me, the words are very important. So it's not an IPO, it's a direct listing. It's very different um, because uh, in this case, Coinbase is directly listing, meaning that uh, uh, people who already own shares of Coinbase will sell them. No, it's not like Coinbase is not raising money directly. It's just like owners of shares are, are, are so are going to are going to um, release the share and you'll be able to buy the, the shares of some people who already own it. So it's not an IPO. So it's just side note um, because the, a lot of people are confused about that. Um, so and I read a very cool article about that this morning. Um, so the market seems to be buzzing uh, with this upcoming uh, listing of Coinbase. And I found something really cool. Uh, you guys might not know NAS, but uh, it's an old rapper and uh he, one of his most famous sing song is called the message it was back i don't know like maybe 15 20 years ago can you sing it no <laughs> i am not saying i am not singing <laughs> all right what's up with him <laughs> i will send you a link if you want i'm not saying he was the um among the fortunate few to have made an early investment of con in coinbase Smart move. Nas, Nas is an amazing rapper, surely. So it's NAS for those of you who are listening and you want to have a look at this guy. Uh, the thing is that like it, it's, it's expecting to reach 100 billion in value, valuation when uh, Coinbase coin will be on the market today. So on that note, um, apparently there is like, they say on articles that the price will be live before maybe not before afternoon et but the last, latest news was the price was around 340. Yeah. um so what do you guys think about that news yeah i'm not sure the 100 billion valuation is I'd like to enter in and it feels rather like a lot of private money pumped coinbase's valuation to make a comfortable exit and I'm more interested in Telegram's IPO happening in just a couple of years. So apparently Telegram is closing the page of its 1,7 billion token sale and paying back its last debt to the token buyers currently. So the company just raised more funding via bonds, uh, more than 1 billion to be exact, and is planning an IPO not later than 2023. So this is what I'm more aiming for. 
Actually, speaking of crypto related stocks, uh, I think it's MicroStrategy whose stock exploded just alongside the Bitcoin rally by, I think, about as much as 10% on Tuesday, just one day after there was an SEC filing that showed that its non employee board members will be paid in Bitcoin. And at the same time, HSBC reportedly blacklisted MicroStrategy stock for investing in Bitcoin and classified them as a virtual currency product, which I find very interesting. Yeah, it's difficult for me to comprehend how some financial institutions reject anything crypto related while billionaire investor Daniel Lopes uh, deep dive into crypto last month led his 17.6 billion hedge fund to a familiar place, a uh, custody deal with Coinbase. So Lopes third point hedge fund now holds cryptocurrency from five of its funds with Coinbase. And according to regulatory documents obtained by Coindesk, um, some doubt billions of dollars in underlying assets, but it is not clear how much of that is in crypto uh, assets or, or for how long to have been invested. Does anyone maybe want to raise a hand and share their opinion in the meanwhile? Well, you know, I can say oh, something. we have someone raising a hand. I can just say something about HSBC. Oh. You know, I worked for them sure. in the past and uh, they are very, very, very traditional. So I am not surprised by that move. <laughs> you know, in, H- in, when, in HSBC, like everything touching crypto, crowdfunding, anything, is just like a huge deal. Uh, um, but that, that was back in the time, right? Hi, Clement. Hi, hi, guys. Uh, this is for, from an old fashioned French uh, speaking here. Uh, with some experience in capital market. Um, I think what's very interesting in my personal opinion is that there's a lot of confusion between uh, direct crypto investments. So as we saw from Tesla, uh, amongst others, and uh, investment related to the infrastructure. Because I think there's a lot of people that are missing the point that um, there's uh, quite a bunch of um, financial player there who actually know that the underlying technology uh, is definitely going to change the face of the world from an operational perspective. And as well, they allow themselves to kind of play sideways by, uh, for instance, investing in, uh, uh, in exchanges where you effectively take an indirect risk, right? So essentially, you're exposed to volumes and, and uh, transaction margins, whereas you're, you're not, you know, you're not directly exposed to the underlyings themselves. So I think that's, um, that's a move from them and probably interesting to follow how they, they, uh, they pursue different strategies. Thank you. Um, Delphine. What's been happening in the corporate world and compliance part of the crypto sphere as oh you're my, the expert? Yeah, oh my God, this week is there's a lot of news. So please hold hold on and sit back in your sofa and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start right. So um, there has been like really interesting stuff. So um, the first one is um, California real estate called Caruso Pro- Properties will now accept Bitcoin for rent on all its properties. And to do that, they are partnership. Uh, they have a partnership with Gemini Exchange, and Caruso will let the tenant of its retail and commercial properties pay their rent in Bitcoin. Uh, this makes Caruso the largest real estate manager in the U.S. to accept um, Bitcoin as a form of payment. I think that's a really interesting news. I mean, like this is kind, this is a really good move, and it's really good, I think, for the industry because. Uh, Bitcoin is actually going to be used for payment. So I think that's really cool. Um, then second one, still in the US, US has been very active this week. Um, Wyoming has legalized online sport betting with a new law that allows gamblers to place their wagers in crypto. Uh, so it's House Bill number 133, uh, which was signed on Monday. So it's very fresh. And it lets sportsbook accept digital crypto and virtual currency bet in lieu of green uh, bags. So long as those crypto can be converted to cash. Also, so quite interesting news. And next, 
let's go to our institutional player. Uh, State, State Street, which is the second oldest bank in the US, uh, with uh, 3.1 trillion in asset under management, is providing the infrastructure for a new bank grade trading platform for digital assets set to go live mid-year and could eventually use the system for trading itself. So State Street Cure Next Trading Technology Arm is working with London-based Pure Digital, an infrastructure provider to the foreign exchange trading world to create an institution-focused digital currency trading platform. Um, the next, the innovation arm of uh, the multinational finance bank uh, City has wrapped a proof-of-concept project with the Inter-American Development Bank to send cross-border payment on a blockchain. Still in the institutional world, um, and again, someone we talked about in the past, uh, BNY Mullen, the world's largest custodian, will be the service provider for a proposed Bitcoin ETF that will be offered by First Trust Advisor and Skybridge Capital. If the ETF is approved, which is really not so sure in the US, but maybe we'll get there, the custody bank will provide ETF basket operation, order taking, fund accounting, fund administration, and transfer agency services. Um, then for the, I guess you all know Revolut. Revolut has added another 11 cryptocurrencies for its yeah, customers. I love Revolut, but I'm, I'm not actually i'm not involved in crypto really through revolut not through revolut oh, i had some of them because sometimes because it's easier to buy them but then I'm, it's you can't move them so it's not really really good but so you have yeah, 11 exactly. more yes i have added recently cardano and some actually they have added some exotic crypto there i was really surprised by the choice right Yes, I also I also checked a list of cryptos. I thought it would be like some top uh, of the coin market cap, highest market cap coins, but it's like completely new names for me. Even. Yeah, there is a, a there is actually Uniswap there. I was really surprised that they are listing like DeFi and not like the main crypto. It's just they have an interesting strategy, right? Yeah, I was thinking I should approach them maybe and see what are the conditions they they ask or or. Very yeah. interesting to know what, it, what are their I know actually, conditions. I actually know the head of compliance in the UK. I was working with her uh, back in Bank of Tokyo. So when I saw that, I was, I was about to ping her and say, what is happening with you? <laughs> <laughs> are you involved in that or are you getting more flexible? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> interesting to know. Yeah, so next uh, we have um, the, um, a blockchain analytics firm, Cypher Trace. You might have heard about them. They are uh, based in the US and they're adding um, a very interesting regulatory compliance tool with a new sanction friendly address tracker for decentralized exchange. So the new DeFi complete tool creates an Oracle on chain links that details crypto wallet address on government watch lists, such as um, the US um, Office of Foreign Asset Control sanction list. Uh, I think this is interesting, but I'm curious to see how this is going to work. Um, but basically, DEX or decentralized smart contract could tap this list and prevent transactions from touching sanction addresses. Well, I think from a compliance point of view, I think this is very nice, but uh, you know, like individual who are under sanction, um, their addresses might be sanctioned, but then they can create another address super easily. So I'm not so sure that's the best thing, but it may, this is going to make the regulator happy for sure. So that's not such a bad news. Uh, but another news that I really pick up my brain was uh, announced uh, today. So the, the SEC commissioner, uh, Mrs. Pierce, as an updated version of a proposal to let crypto startups sell token as initial, initial coin offering to fund their development effort without running a full of US securities law. So it's called the Safe Harbor Proposal number two. It has been published yesterday. And so it updates a proposal number one, 
which suggests a three-year grace period that will let blockchain project actually develop their network or token after raising funds. So basically, under the proposal, a company could sell token before building the project, uh, but will be exempt from federal requirements that a security issuer register with the SEC. So I think that would, if this thing passed, it would be a very, very smart move from the US because, for instance, uh, as you mentioned, you know, Telegram uh, showed it just before. Uh, Telegram was sanctioned by the SEC saying that they were doing a security token offering. If this thing would have been in place, they would not have been accused of that. And um, so I think that's a very, very positive development. And let's see if it's adopted. Yeah, hopefully it will boost the... Um blockchain scene in US and people wouldn't be so much afraid of operating or offering their services under US jurisdictions. Um, Clement, you're coming from a corporate world as I understood. Yeah, um, I worked for about 10 years in uh, capital markets and uh, for the last three years in uh, for a family office. All right. So what, what thoughts do you have um, in terms of the last mentioned news? Um, I don't really have a thought, to be honest. Um... But it's rather bullish, right? <laughs> to the whole crypto adoption. I think there's a lot of things going on at the moment. So, uh, I mean, I'm watching. I'm, I mean, being in... I'm being a speculator myself rather than, I would say, a proper investor at this stage uh, in the sense that I'm still trying to figure out what what project makes sense. Although I think um, from a, an equity investor perspective, what's interesting is that uh, there is a lot out there in terms of technology that is already deployed, uh, but through more like traditional channels, like thinking about IBM, thinking about other, uh, you know, uh, big players, um, which we only indirectly can access to, and um, not even not even talking about um, well, definitely private placement, private investment in non-listed companies. So I see it on a on a on a let's say a broader maybe on a broader view. And but it's definitely fascinating, and it's uh, definitely changing the entire spectrum. Tracy, do you have any comments on the last on the in the light of the last news? Maybe two quick comments on the last two things in particular. I think uh, Delphine already made an excellent point with regards to cipher trace, right? I think this is one of those instances where. The th you know, in theory, it sounds it sounds excellent, um, and it sounds like something that the regulator will, of course, you know, be jumping up and down about. But the question is always how how difficult is it to work around? Um, and I think she already hinted that you know it's not it's not that difficult. Just make another address, and um, you you kind of you know you have a nice workaround. Um, that's with regards to the first thing. With regards to the second thing, um, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, anything that that will help boost growth in um, in the U.S. is in my in my mind at least a positive thing. You know, when you look at um, venture capital trends, etc., most the the largest volumes of blockchain company investments are still coming out of the U.S. Um, and I think if they can boost their just from a, from a from maybe a bit of an agnostic um, point of view and not from the Crypto Valley point of view, but if they can boost um, you know the strength of of their own U.S. based blockchain ecosystem um, that will, you know, that that's a huge benefit to them. And anything that makes that a bit easier is uh, is a good move in my book or is a good strategic move in my book. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Uh, does anyone else from the audience wants to uh, weigh in? Nikolai, Babel, feel free to raise your hand. Otherwise, we're going to close down. <laughs> okay, no one. Then thank you so much for joining us, uh, Delphine and Tracy and Clement. This is it for today. Uh, for bigger selection and more in-depth blockchain news, uh, please visit velas.com digest. 
and tune in every Wednesday at 6 p.m. CET for the Velas Weekly Blockchain Digest here on Clubhouse and join our house, the official Velas Club, and also the LinkedIn page with the same name. I want to thank my co-host Elfine and today's special guest for joining. My name is Sirli Valge. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Charlie, and thank you everyone for joining. Always a, very, also a pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the evening. Thank you for hosting. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.